In this universe, there is one great energy, and we have no name for it. People have tried various names for it, like God, like Brahman, like Tao. But in the West, the word God has got so many funny associations attached to it that most of us are bored with it. When people say, God the Father Almighty, most people feel funny inside. And so we like to hear new words. We like to hear about Tao, about Brahman, and uh, Tathata, and such strange names from the Far East because they don't carry the same associations of sanctimony and funny meanings from the past. And actually, some of these words that the Buddhists use for the basic energy of the world really don't mean anything at all. The word tathata, which is translated to suchness or thusness, based on the word tat, which in Sanskrit means that, and so tatvam asi, that thou art, or in modern American, you're it. But da, da, that's the first sound a baby makes when it comes into the world. Because the baby looks around and says, da, 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 that. But according to Buddhist philosophy, all this universe is one ta ta ta. That means 10,000 functions or 10,000 things, one suchness. And we're all one suchness. And that means that suchness comes and goes like everything else because this whole world is an on and off system. As the Chinese say, it's the yang and the yin. And therefore it consists of now you see it, now you don't, here you are, here you aren't. Because that's the very nature of energy, to be like waves, and waves have crests and troughs. Only, we being under a certain kind of sleepiness or illusion, imagine that the trough is going to overcome the crest, The yin, the dark principle, is going to overcome the yang, or the light principle. And that off is finally going to triumph over on. And we, shall I say, bug ourselves by indulging in that illusion. Gee, supposing darkness did win out, wouldn't that be terrible? And so we're constantly trembling and thinking that it may, because after all, isn't it odd that anything exists? It's most peculiar, it requires effort, it requires energy, and it would be so much easier for there to have been nothing at all. Therefore we think, well, since being, since the is side of things is so much effort, you always give up after a while and you sink back into death. But death is just the other face of energy. And it's the rest, the not being anything around, that produces something around, just in the same way that you can't have solid without space, or space without solid. When you wake up to this and realize that the more it changes, the more it's the same thing, that you are really a playing of this one energy and there is nothing else but that, that it is you, but that for you to be always you would be an insufferable bore. And therefore, it is arranged that you stop being you after a while and then come back as someone else altogether. And 
So when you find that out, you become full of energy and delight. And you suddenly see through the whole sham of things. You realize you're, you're that. We won't put a name on it. You're that. And you can't be anything else. So you are relieved of fundamental terror. That doesn't mean that you're always going to be a great hero. That you won't jump when you hear it bang. That you won't worry occasionally. That you won't lose your temper. It means though that fundamentally deep, deep down within you, you will be able to be human. Not a stone Buddha, you know, in Zen, there is a difference made between a living Buddha and a stone Buddha. If you go up to a stone Buddha and you hit him hard on the head, nothing happens. You break your fist or your stick. But if you hit a living Buddha, he may say, ouch. And he may feel pain. Because if he didn't feel something, he wouldn't be a human being. Buddhas are human. They are enlightened men and women. But the point is that they are not afraid to be human. They are not afraid to let themselves participate in the pains, difficulties, and struggles that naturally go with human existence. So it is then that, if I may put it metaphorically, the perfect man employs his mind as a mirror. It grasps nothing, it refuses nothing. It receives but does not keep. In other words, this is to live without hang-ups. The word hang-up being an almost exact translation of the Japanese bonno and the Sanskrit klesha. Uh, ordinarily translated worldly attachment, but all that sounds a little bit... You know what I mean, it sounds pious. And in Zen, things that sound pious are said to stink of Zen. But to have no hang-up. That is to say, to be able to drift like a cloud and flow like water. Seeing that all life is a magnificent illusion. A playing of energy. And there is absolutely nothing fundamentally to be afraid of. Fundamentally. You will be afraid on the surface. You will be afraid of putting your hand in the fire. You will be afraid of getting sick but you will not be afraid of fear fear will pass over your mind like a black cloud will be reflected in the mirror 